Hi, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for coming to the virtual Vue.js Vienna meetup, the first one we do ever. It's our time for our regular March meetup uh, in Vue.js Vienna, but this time we are Hi, virtual. Everyone. Welcome. As we've been mentioning to you, others, let me double check that I don't have I actually hear the stream behind here. So I'll stop that. Sorry for that. We have to figure out this new technology. So for those of you who haven't joined before, my name is Robert Axelson. This is the Vue.js Vienna uh, meetup group. We are normally organized via meetup.com. If you come because this is on my uh, live stream channel, um, hello to you. I'll give some context soon. Um, I meant to stream this on the Vue.js Vienna channel, but the problem is I started it yesterday and I realized only today that it takes a day to get approved to stream on a channel. So next time we'll hopefully be set up in the right way. With me today, I have Maria Lamardo. She'll um, talk to us soon. I'll go through some normal intro slides like we normally do. Um, Vue.js Vienna is a JavaScript framework. Um, so for programming to make websites for those of you who just drop in, I think some people will be coming from Discord, from the international um, chat room. Some people will already know me and some people will have seen us via meetup.com, the meetup group. And if you don't know about meetup.com, the meetup group, feel free to have a look at meetup.com and check us out if you are ever in Vienna or live in the area. We normally have live in-person meetups. But now because of the Corona time, unfortunately for everyone's safety, uh, we are hunkered down at home and we're trying to make this still work. Cool. Um, it's a bit confusing because normally we have a sponsor that covers pizza. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't even have virtual pizza for you today. So uh, I'm just mentioning them because they are ongoingly supporting us. Also, also supporting all the time I spend on organizing and hosting this meetup they are um, supporting and covering. So that's really nice of them. Have a look. Um, it's an IT services company. So if you're looking for a job um, locally in Vienna, you can have a look and there should be tons of jobs available. I do not know what the situation is currently, uh, but there has been no official hiring stop. So it just might be slower than usual because of the circumstances. Uh, we promoted View Day, View Day Italy. Um, just to let you know that they've moved from April to September. Uh, it's still going to happen unless, of course, things uh, change. So keep that in mind. Uh, I think that will, this will still work. If not, let me know. There's a discount code if you would like to go there in, uh, in autumn. Uh, we have two more meetups, and for all the meetups that um, I organize with Epcont, they will be um, also cancelled the in-person version will be cancelled for now um i'm trying to make them all into virtual meetups but it depends on if we get speakers to join us live or not and um, the organizational part so i cannot promise that all of them will still happen but we're trying and we'll be letting you know if you're already in the meetup group you should get information about that yes so the program today is uh, shorter than usual because there's no pizza and no drinks <laughs> only the drinks and pizza you have at home in your fridge uh, but I'm talking now in the introduction. I'm soon finished. And then Maria Lamardo, who I met in Vue.js Amsterdam, who had a talk there. She will be speaking um, about content loading that isn't broken. It's about how does Vue.js handle rerouting and loading new content with a screen reader. Uh, let's explore how we can improve the experience for a lot of users who rely on assistive technologies. But she'll give a really good rundown herself and let her know what this is all about. Um, she's a front-end engineer at Pendo, a worldwide events manager for Vue Vixens, uh, Vue Vixens chapter leader, founder of Devs at RTP, and co-founder of Ally Devs. Uh, Maria's passion for accessibility stems from her work as a board-certified assistant behavior analyst, providing behavioral therapy for people with developmental disabilities for over eight years. And she loves helping her community, hiking, and her crazy husky marks. <laughs> <laughs> and then at the end, we'll be open for questions. And if someone has a question in general for the group or for the meetup, uh, let us know in the chat. We'll try to make this work. Hi, uh, Robert Wildling. Maria is here with us. Hi, Jack Coppa. And yeah, if anyone else wants to chat and join us in the chat, feel free to um, jump in. And that's the cue. So without further ado, I'll give the screen and the attention to Maria.
Thank you so much for joining us all the way from across seas, and I'm looking forward to your talk. Thank you so much. Hey, everyone. I'm just going to make sure that my screen is up really quick. Yeah. Yeah. OK, cool. Um, so hey, everyone. <laughs> um, I think most of you have seen, or at least the people that are commenting have seen this talk before. So um, feel free to jump in with any questions. This is like for meetups. It's a little bit more casual. So I will take it slow and take any questions. I'll kind of keep checking back here um, in case I see any questions. Uh, but yeah, so today's talk is about content loading and how you can handle uh, content loading of your applications. Um, so let me just go on my slides. So web accessibility is super important. And for anybody who's building a really high quality application, and they really should consider um, building it accessible so all the users can use it. And, you know, the, um, the internet was actually made for access to all people. And when we are creating accessible applications, we're actually meeting this goal. Um, and of course, there's different types of disabilities. There's motor, cognitive, auditory, and visual impairments. And they each will have, um, you know, very use uh, different use cases for each application and very different experience depending on which disability the user might be experiencing. Um, so keep that in mind when you're creating applications, not to just test one use case, um, but try different user flows with different types of assistive technologies. Um, so here I have this. Um, color wheel. And I actually have this application called Color Oracle, which is really easy to use. You can just um, turn it on and then with your arrow keys, toggle different types of color blindness. And it does give you a little bit of information about each type, um, like what the, uh, the effect it has on the population. So this one's 5% of all males will see um, colors like this, 2.5, 0.5. Um, and then this is just grayscale. You could see that the colors change drastically depending on whether or not you have a color blindness. So making sure that you're not only providing colors as the only indicator for information on your website is super, super important. Um, another thing you want to consider inside your applications is the use of heading structures and how you're handling that. Um, making sure that every section starts up with like similar headings and then they, you can nest headings inside of those. Um, and making sure that you're not skipping any any of them. So if you start with H1, the following will be H2 followed by H3. Don't go from like H1 to an H6. Um, really think about this as sectioning off your content as like in a higher hierarchical manner. Um, yeah. And then also um, the use of landmarks is super super important. And there are a lot of like. Uh, semantic elements that you can use for this, like the header tag, nav, main, aside, and footer. And there's a lot of these that you can use to kind of uh, set out your content structure in your application to um, make it easier for users who are using assistive technologies to be able to navigate. Um, now, I want to get a little bit into some of the problems that you encounter when you're using single page applications. Uh, because uh, we are using client side JavaScript to handle the routing, um, browsers won't handle a lot of things for you. Like it won't refresh the page and handle the focus. Um, so you're missing out on things like uh, screen reader announcements that a new content has loaded, as well as the focus management for that. So there are some simple solutions, uh, making sure that you are using ARIA Live regions to, hand, uh, to handle any announcements of new content that has been um, added to the page or don't do to a reroute, as well as um, handling the focus ourselves. And there's actually uh, been some accessibility research done. Uh, Marcy Sutton and Fable Tech Labs actually paired up um, to run a research study where they grabbed uh, people who have different types of disabilities and they tested out different uh, techniques in how to handle focus and um, announcements of content. And she wrote a really, really good article about it called What We Learned from User Testing of Access Accessible client size routing techniques with Fable Tech Labs. Um, and their findings are really, really interesting. And we'll kind of go over some of those techniques today. So I'll show you the application. Um, and some of you have already seen it. Uh, but it's pretty simple application. And you can see that you could, oh, look, 
that was nice. <laughs> that never happens. Um, but you can see that it's kind of like a memory game. You can um, open some cards and if you get a match, they'll stay up on the board like this. Um, and then of course, there's also an instructions page. Um, so let's check out the experience for this with a screen reader. And I'm actually, let's see how this is going to work out. Let me know. Um, let me change the <laughs> speed on this because that is really fast for you guys. Um, so another cool thing about um, screen readers is that you can actually um, set the speed at which... The best way to predict the future is to invent it. Rate yeah. The best way. So let me show you, like, if you change the speed, like I'll go 90. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'll go ahead. Rate 45, the best way to predict the future. I think that's pretty safe. So I'll stick with that one um, and go back to the application. So I'll turn it on and I'm using a Mac. So this is already built in. Um, so I'm using Command F5 to turn this on. Busy. VoiceOver on Chrome, matching game. So um, since we have time, I'm going to talk a little bit about VoiceOver. Um, VoiceOver comes built in into every Mac. And when you turn it on, you're going to get this kind of gray box that you could move around as you see fit and um you know it takes a little bit to load so you're gonna get some like oh busy loading or um not ready um and then once it kind of is live and ready to go um you're gonna see everything that the screen reader is reading out loud written inside this gray box um so i'm gonna go ahead and start um maybe do a reroute into the instructions in the application visited link instructions chrome has new window visited link home so you could see that like after I loaded the content, like it read that I'm on a link, but after the new link, after clicking on the link and new content came into the page, like I really wasn't informed of any of that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and like show you how the game is played. Visited link, reset button, main, question button, list 16 items, question button, question button, question button. So this kind of um, shows a couple of problems here. Like, all I hear, like all the feedback that I'm getting is that it's a question button. Like I hear the content and I know that it's a button, but I don't know. I didn't realize that there is a list of buttons. I don't know which button I am currently on. Um, so I have no way of telling like where I am on the page. And let's try to interact with the button. So I'll flip this one over. Okay, that didn't give me any feedback. So I'll try to find a match for it. Button. You are currently on a button. To click this button, press control, option, space. So you could see that I opened two uh, cards that did not match and they closed and I didn't get any feedback as to um, anything that was happening on the page. Um, another thing I want to point out, if you're using a screen reader, um, you can hit the control key to silence it. So for example, question. So I just press the control key to silence the button part. Question, button, you work. Um, so that's why you see like if it ever gets cut off, that's me manually doing it. <laughs> um, so let's take a look at our code and um, see how we can improve some of the, this application. So the first thing I wanna do is um, go inside our router and I started adding some metadata inside each of our routes. So I gave it a title and a description. Um, so I have a home page and an instruction page. Um, and this is going to help um, with SEOs. So if I show you now, um, yeah. So if I show you the elements here and we're looking at the title, um, you could see that as I, um, here, this is what we're looking at. Yeah, so as I toggle this, you could see that that title is now updating. So this is going to help um, give some extra information to our users. Another thing that this is going to do is help with um, search engine optimization, as it's going to read the description for each page when you um, search for your site online. Uh, another thing I want to talk about next is ARIA Live Regions. Um, so let's talk a little bit about those. So ARIA Live Regions are used to announce any non-interactive content changes inside your applications. Uh, and there's a couple of uh, different settings for this. ARIA Live Assertive, which will update 
uh, an announcement and it to interrupt the user flow. So you guys remember how I was telling you that I can kind of mute the screen reader in the middle of its um, message. This will kind of do that for you and, in, and instead insert another message on top of that. So it's going to interrupt that flow and give you a new message. Um, whereas Aria Life Polite will allow that message to finish um, to finish before adding a new message on top of it. So it kind of like queues it up. Um, and of course, the default setting is Aria Life off, which won't give you any, any feedback. And when you're using a, a role status in an element, it is the equivalent of using Aria Life Polite. So it's going to announce, uh, add the announcement after the current action is complete. So let's take a look at our app view. Let me actually change this. Um, so in here, you could see that I've added this new element that has a role of status. So again, this is going to be Aria Life Polite. Um, and I've added this announce uh, this announcement property, which I'm getting from the state. And I'm actually going to be updating it. And I'm using the store to handle all of this. But you could see that I am actually going to be changing this um, announcement property uh, to have the route name and page loaded every time it loads. Um, and so let's go back to the application to show you what I mean by this. Um, so every time I change routes, um, we are now getting this new message of home page loaded or instruction page loaded. Now, this is usually something you might want to hide from the user as like this is really for screen readers, but I have um, allowed it to kind of be visible for the purposes of presentation. Um, but let me go ahead and turn on the screen reader really quick. Busy, busy. Voice over on Chrome. Visit link. Home. Chrome has new window. Home page loaded. Visit link. Instructions. Instructions page loaded. Voice over off. So you could see that now I'm getting that feedback of a new page being loaded. So that's really, really good. Another thing I want to point out is um, as I watch the route change and update this message, I also want to make sure that I'm updating which um, link in my list of links is active. So right now in this nav, I have a couple of links that could be active. Um, so I want to make sure that screen reader users are also aware of which one is currently active. Um, so let's go back to the slides really quick. Um, I want to talk a little bit about ARIA current. And ARIA current is used to indicate any current item in a list. And there's different types. There's page, which talks about links, steps, location, date, and time. Um, and right now we're going to be focusing on page because we are dealing with links. So you could see here that um, as I as I change uh, my navigation, we're updating um, the ARIA, ARIA current to that page. So if I inspect this, um, yeah, so if I inspect this, you can see that I am getting the ARIA current of page in the active link, ARIA current of page. So let's turn on the screen reader and see what that's like. Voice over on Chrome, memory, visited, link, instruct, visited, link. Home, Chrome has new window, visited, link, instruction to enable screen reader support, press, con visited, link, home. So you can see that I'm, I'm getting visited, link, home, and visited, link instructions, but it's not really catching the ARIA current page, right? So it's not telling me any information of which one's active. Um, and that actually gets into a really good point because um, it's not going to work because I am using Chrome and I am using um, voiceover. voiceover but if, if I were to go on Safari and do the exact same yeah. thing. Link, instructions, visit, link, home, Ooh. matching, yeah, visit, link, home, link, instructions, visit, link, home. We're currently on a link inside of web. Wait, hold on. Technical difficulties. I'm not sure what's happening. <laughs> um, so let's take a look here. So we have this nav, we have this, and we are not catching that, um, not catching that change in the code. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Well, <laughs> let's see. Uh, all right. So let's see. So we, what I'm looking for is that it has that, yeah, are your current page? Perfect. So this should this should work now. Um, let me turn on my screen reader really quick. Voice over on Safari. Reset. Link. Current page. Visit. Link. Link. Instruction. Current page. Visit. Link. So you can see that we are getting current page Voice in. Voice over off. 
in Safari when using voiceover. So let's go back to our slides really quick. And that is because different screen readers have different supports depending on which browser they're being used in. So NVDA will be best supported by Firefox. And this is a really, really great choice if you're using Windows and um, this is a free screen reader. JAWS, it is a paid screen reader and it works best with um, Internet Explorer. And VoiceOver, which is free and built in in all Macs, um, works best with Safari. So even though you are um, updating your applications correctly and you're using the right attributes, you might not see it unless you're using um, a certain browser because of the support. Um, so yeah, so let's go back to the code and see what else we can um, do. So again, we've kind of handled the links and the reroute, but something that we haven't considered still is um, the focus um, when you change the page, what happens to that focus? Um, so what we want, what I've go ahead and done, I added this skips links um, that will skip to the main content of the specific page. And then if we go home, which is one of our pages, you could see that we have this main ID here for our main content, as well as for the instructions. Um, yeah, in the instructions, we also have this ID of main um, on that main um, section. So when we when we go when we do this, you see how we have like a skip to main content, and we're gonna skip here. And this is um, happening like this because we have a tab index of negative one, and it brings it into focus. So let's go to the slides and talk a little bit about tab indexing. Um, so tab indexes uh, indicates that an element can be focused and um, it also determines its sequential order. And we have a couple of different uh, settings that we can attach to this. Tab index of zero, which makes the element focusable by a keyboard in the DOM order in which it is added. Um, so let's take a look at our code and I'll show you a couple of examples. Um, no tab, and then it's gonna be tab index of zero. Um, so I wanna show you some paragraph, uh, uh, two paragraphs. One doesn't have a tab index and this one has tab index of zero. Now, um, semantically elements that are, that are tabbable by default are things like any input fields, um, buttons and links. So paragraph, you are not able to tab through it um, by default. So if I am at the beginning of my page and I start tabbing through it, um, I expect to kind of skip the paragraph, but you can see that I skipped that first paragraph, but the second paragraph that has a tab index of zero actually gets added to that uh, dumb order of tabbable elements. So you could see that I'm able to access that one. Another thing you can do is set the tab index um, to anything greater than one than zero, so any positive numbers. And this allows the element to be focusable by a keyboard, um, but it does jump ahead of the DOM order. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So I'm going to add two of them and I'm gonna do two and one. Um, so again, this is, has zero, one, two. So I'm gonna go back and refresh. And the first thing I'm gonna do is, um, actually I'll start from over here. Okay, so if I'm tabbing, you could see that, um, well, it seems to be focusing on, okay, so I, as the first thing I tab, it, it goes to the tab index of one. And then if I tab again, it's gonna go to tab index of two. And if I had tab index of three, four, five, um, it would kind of continue down that, um, that order. And then after I finish any positive numbers, it's gonna go back into the dumb order. So then I go back to all my links, anything with tab index of zero, and then um, down to the dumb order. Now, a thing I want to point out is that, yes, this is available for you, but you should really, really avoid using any positive numbers on your tab indexing, as it can be very, very confusing for um, users who are using assistive technology. And also, um, it is really hard to maintain. So, for example, if you have some uh, a bunch of elements that you're using and you're all the way to, like, tab index of 12 and or tab index of 22 or something, and then you need to change, like, the 10th item, and then now you have to update all of the tab indexing that... Uh, come after that. Um, so it's really, really um, a better practice to just use tab index of zero when you can, and then just add them in the correct DOM order so that it's just um, more maintainable and easy to use for users.
Another setting you can give it is tab index of negative one. And this allows the element to be focused programmatically. Um, so let's take a look at what that means. So I will give it a tab index of negative one and save that. And before I do anything else, I'm just gonna go back to the page and try to tab to it. So again, I'm going to one, two, then through all the normal elements, zero. And then I actually completely skipped that tab index of negative one. It, like, it didn't really bring it into focus at all. But that is because it does this programmatically. So let's give this a rev of, I don't know, tab here. Um, and then every time I click that reset button, um, let's see, yeah, new game. I'm going to call this ref of tab here and I'm going to focus. So if I go back now and I hit this, again, I'm skipping it as I tab through, but if I hit that reset button, you see that my focus now goes to that tab index of negative one, even though it's a paragraph and it's not semantically tabbable. So that is why, that is why we add things like tab index of negative one here so that it's not only tabbable, but it's focusable. Uh, so that it's not, um, not sorry, not tabbable, but, but uh, that it's focusable when we call focus to it. So for example, if we are in here and I'm going to open up this tool called Nerd Focus, which keeps track of everything that is currently in focus in your site. So um, let me show you a little example. So you can see as I'm tabbing through, it's kind of catching what element I am on. Um, so if I go to the main content, like if I skip to main content and I'll clear this before, um, you could see that I'm actually on main um, and we see this blue um, outline. But if I were to remove the tab index of negative one, making the main element not tabbable by default, and I'm going to still be tracking my focus. If I hit home and then skip to main content, uh, my my screen will scroll down, but you could see that my focus isn't actually on main content. It's on the body and my screen has just kind of scrolled. Um, so that's very different when you include tab index of negative one. Um, I'm going to go back here to see if anybody has any questions. Okay, cool. I think we are good. <laughs> um, okay. Another thing I want to move into is um, let's get into the gameplay of it. So something we haven't still fixed was how that gameplay functions for people um, using screen readers. So as we saw from the beginning, it wasn't giving us any feedback when we flipped cards, when we matched cards, or when we opened two cards that were not the same. Um, so what we're doing here is inside our home component, uh, yeah, which is where the game is held. Um, I've added a an announcement. Um, ooh, yeah, no, it, I have to revert my changes. <laughs> Okay, there you go. Um, yeah, so here I've added another announcement which works the same way as the as the first one I've showed you. So again, role of status, which gives me an aria, aria life of polite. So it's going to wait for any content to finish um, getting announced before adding this new one. Uh, and I am, again, using the store to update this. And I will do this um, to help me find it. And then you could see that as I play the game, so as I flip cards, it's going to start updating my messages. So when I first flip a card, it's going to say, if, if the card's already flipped, it's going to say it's already flipped. Um, when I first flip a new card, then it's going to give me the card name and flipped. So it's going to say like, car flipped. Um, if matches are found, it's going to tell me the card name, the fact that it got matched, and the amount of matches remaining in the game. If I win the game, it's going to update the game, uh, the announcement to the winning message. And if I have no match, it's going to tell me the card name and that it flipped without a match. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to turn on my screen reader. Chrome busy. Voice, I want to just make sure to an up next. Animation started. You are online. Reset button. Remember card two button. Card, okay. card two button. Card three button. 
Oh yeah, another thing I want to mention is that I've also not only have well, okay, okay. Let's finish the update. Um, busy, busy, busy. Voice over card two, but card three button, card four button. Yep. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip the card. Bug flipped. So I got uh, feedback that bug was flipped. So I'm gonna go back and um, open paw. Card three button. Paw flipped. No match. You have two total. So it told me the bug was flipped and then that the paw was flipped, no match, and then it closed both of them. Um, so I got that feedback right away. And then let's try to find a match. Card, so, three, card, card two, card one button. Bomb flipped. Card two button. Bomb flipped. Match found. Seven matches left. You have a four top. Moves with three stars. Yeah, so it told me um, bomb was open, bomb was matched. How many, um, how many matches were left in the game? Another thing I want to point out. Ooh. Okay. okay. <laughs> Another thing I want to point out is the use of um, adding the accessible names. So you could see that as I was going through the game, it was now telling me like card one, card two, card three. Um, and we this is actually done um, by adding accessible names, and you could do this a couple of ways. Um, so I've used um, aria labels. Yeah. So here's the card. So um, aria label. Um, and then you could see that I also have this aria described by, and then in some places you'll see that I'm using um, aria labeled by. So let's go back to our slides and kind of talk a little bit about accessible names. So there are different aria attributes that you can um, add into your elements to give accessible names, one of them being aria label, and this will provide essential information about an object. Um, and then you really want to use aria label um, when the content that you want to announce is not present in anywhere on your page. For example, if you have an application and you have say, say that you have a modal and you know you have that little X icon to close, um, there the word close doesn't really exist within there. Usually you, you can have it, but usually it doesn't exist anywhere. So this is where you will go into that icon and give it an aria label of close. Um, an aria label by uh, behaves very similarly to aria label, um, except that um, except that it's going to be paired up with something else that is on the page. For example, let's go back to that icon example. So if you had an X, but inside that modal, there was a big word that said close, um, you can actually reuse that content to give that uh, accessible name to the icon. And you do that by pairing it with an ID. And I'll show you guys some example of this in a little bit. And aria described by is used to provide additional information that the user might need. And it works like aria, aria labeled by in that you pair it up with an ID, um, but it doesn't give it an accessible name. It gives it an accessible description. So when we go back and look at the code, you can see that our button has an aria label. So um, which is if the card is flipped, then tell me the card name and tell me that it's flipped. Else tell me the card and the index in which it's in. Um, another thing we're adding is an aria described by for each button that tells me the game update. And let's go check out what the game update looks like. Uh, let's see. Okay, so game update is in my store. Yeah, so you can see that um, the game update is saying that I have um, a, a, num a number of moves left um, with certain, a number of moves with certain stars left. So if we go to our application and I turn on my screen reader. Chrome busy, voice over on Chrome, reset button, card three button, let's stick card four button, card five button. So I just paused the screen reader, but you could see that I was getting, now I'm getting feedback card four, card three, card five. And I'm gonna go to the next card and I'm gonna let it read the card number and the fact that it's a button. And you can see that when I hover a little bit, I'm going to get all of this additional information. Card six button. You have four total moves with three stars left. You are currently on a button to click this button. And remember, all of that extra information actually came from the aria described by. So you could see that um, it doesn't add an, an accessible name, but it adds a little bit more of a description um, to that element. And that's what we're, um, that's kind of the benefits of having an aria described by that. Um, users still kind of get a lot of feedback um, without interrupting their flow um, with a really, really long name. An aria described by, which is used up here, um, gives the main um, the main element a name. And you could see that we're actually getting that from the header. 
So if we go back, and I'll turn my screen reader. Chrome busy, busy, visit voiceover on Chrome, visit link, skip to main. So I'm gonna skip to the main content. Memory game board, group game board main. So you could see that it told me that it's a memory game board, which is game board. this game board. You are currently um, ending level two, voiceover off. So you could see that it's um, reading that title and the accessible name. Another way that you can also see it, if you don't want to turn off on your screen reader, um, you can inspect an element. And I'll go ahead and inspect this one that is open. And I'm using Chrome. And Chrome has this awesome accessibility tab, like same where you would look at styles. Um, there's a tab for accessibility. And if you scroll down, you can see that it has uh, a couple of accessibility um, well, a, a bunch of information on the accessibility. So you could see that this specific card has an ARIA label. So it has a name. So this is the accessible name that will get picked up by uh, assistive technology of bomb flipped. And this is actually getting, um, getting it from an ARIA label. And um, we also see that we have this description, um, which is getting it from an ARIA uh, described by. If I were to give this element another attribute that had our ARIA labeled by, it will actually overwrite my ARIA, lab uh, ARIA label. And in fact, I'll take a little bit of time to show you what I mean by this. So this is a button. I'll do ARIA label. And then I'll do another one with a label and a label by. Okay, so if we go back to our application, we see those three numbers. So the first one, we expect to have a name of button because it's actually getting it from the contents of what is inside that element. If we go to our second button, which has um, just an ARIA label, right? So you could see it here. It just has an ARIA label. You can see that the accessible name is now label, and it actually crosses out the content and overwrites it with this new ARIA label, and that's what becomes its new accessible name. And when you have things like all content, ARIA label, and ARIA labeled by, you can see that they all kind of get crossed out. Um, and you could see that it's um, content, ARIA label, and ARIA labeled by. And actually, let's see. This is ARIA labeled by, yeah. So, you can see how this works. And actually, sometimes this one will overwrite um, the ARIA label. So yeah, just different ways of using all of these um, attributes. OK, another thing that we still haven't done is what happens when you win the game. So let's handle winning the game. So um, home hasn't changed much. We are still updating the view. And I'm actually going to go back here and I'm going to make it really easy to win. So I'm going to, I don't know, um, comment all of these types out, which is what's creating my, my game board over here. And I'm going to turn on my screen reader. Chrome busy, busy, voiceover, visited, link, instruct, reset, button, card one, button, list two items. You have one total move with bell flip, card two, button. Heading level two. Congratulations. Memory game board group. You won the game with three stars left. Your voiceover off. So you can see that this new content loaded and it immediately brought focus to this H2. It read the value of like the contents of this. And then it gave me this winning message. So it picked up a couple of things. So let's take a look at how that, that um, kind of came to be. So if we look at home, we can see that we have this... Um, winning component and it will only show if I win the game and um, the entire game will be hidden from view. So because this lives in a different component, um, we don't really want to call it, oh, this is the wrong, okay. Yeah, we don't really um, call it with the ID. We want to actually focus um, on it with a directive. So we we have this V focus directive. And if we look at our main JS, we see that we've added this directive here. And you could do this inside the component as well, um, but this just makes it global. And you could see that every time the, and this element is inserted, that you want to call uh, focus to that element. And that's what's happening here. And again, we've added this tab index of negative one. So you could see that focus ring and users are aware of where the focus is currently at. 
And a couple of things that are also happening here is that I have this aria labeled by. So remember when it focused on the header, it read the header name and it read that message underneath. And that message is actually down here and it has an ID of winning message. And then the content and then the H2 itself has an ID of congratulations. So you can use ARIA labeled by to pair up different IDs and add on more content to be read out loud to users. So this, when this H2 gets focused, it's going to call the contents of this, which are congratulations. And it's also going to say the winning message, which is down here, which is you won the game with three cards left, with three stars left. Um, another thing I want to point out, um, I think I did this earlier. You won the game. Let's see if that gets picked up. Um, Busy. Busy. Memory game. Visit, visit, visit. Reset. Card one button. List two items. Bell flipped. Card two button. Heading level two. Congratulations, you won the game. Memory game board group. You won the game with three stars left. You voice overall. Okay. Let me try other words. There are a couple of words. I think it's like, say that I say, like, you won. Um, and I felt kind of weird. Um, let's see. There are certain words that, ooh. Voice heading level two. Congratulations, you W O N N the game. Memory game board group. Voice over off. Yeah, so you guys saw that um, there are certain certain words um, that the screen readers, like you have to be very careful when you're using capitalized letters um, as the screen readers will sometimes pick it up as like an acronym and start spelling it out instead of reading the actual word. Um, so as you're building out your applications, make sure that you're kind of testing that out and making sure that you're using words that screen readers um, are able to pick up and not um, kind of spell out instead. Um, so yeah, so this hopefully showed you um, the importance of creating an, an inclusive user experience. Um, and you can see that with a couple of changes, we were able to bring this entire application, um, a lot more functionality and ease of use for people who are using assistive technology. Um, I've also created, uh, here's the GitHub um, repo for this game, um, if you guys are interested in playing around with it. And I also have a web accessibility course in View School if you guys are interested in learning more. Um, I've also created a workshop for this specific game if you guys want to put it together yourselves. It is available for free at um, viewvixens.org. Um, so feel free to look for it there if, you, if you're interested. Um, let me go in here and see if there are any questions. Um, I don't know, maybe Rob was able to see. Do, 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 do. Um, I'm posting, posting on the screen now. The first question we got in the middle of the talk uh, was from Michel Emiano. It's oh, about yeah. does tab index get reevaluated when populated by reactive properties like in view? So like if you bring a new um piece of content that has like a tab index of zero, that's going to get added. Oh, cool. <laughs> I like, um, yeah, yeah. So it, it's going to get added in that dumb order in which it comes in. Cool. Let us know if that answered your question, Mitchell. And the next yeah, one is, I see this was actually answered. Um, yeah. Neha said already that it was nerd focus, right? The tool you used. Yes. To nerd yeah. focus. And I can actually, oh yeah, let me stop sharing my screen, but <laughs> I no can worries. actually um, look for it and show you, um, like share the link to, to download it if you guys are interested. Yeah, cool. Uh, we have one more question from Karvak. Which text to speech tools would be considered and developed for? I mean, I'm pretty sure there are some tools that could be compared to Internet Explorer and not worth developing for. You show again which tab in Chrome Dev Tools you use to keep. Oh yeah, sorry. Can you can you post that question or maybe it is posted? Okay. Um, text to speech tools considered and developed for. Um, well, you should really be considering. <laughs> you should really be considering uh, testing and and yeah, developing and testing uh, with different uh, screen readers and different browsers to um, make sure that you are providing the functionality that you need for your users. Um, so it is important to kind of pair it up with different um, screen readers. 
make when you're testing that, make sure that you're using the right screen reader to browser pairing um, to best test for functionality. But <laughs> there are some users in IE. <laughs> there, the legendary or the the rumors are the rumors say there are the some rumors. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The the question you just mentioned with the tabs, I think he was referring to because Neha was answering him. He was referring to when you were in Chrome Dev Tools, you had the nerd focus. That was the tab mm -hmm. he was referring to. So that's already covered. And Robert is saying, would it make sense to create an app's CSS around the accessibility props? Um, uh, do you mean for the, like, for example, for the for the role of status? Um, so I create a rule. Is that kind of where we're getting at? Let me see the chat. Um, There's nothing more so far, but I'm sure he'll add to it if um, he's still with us. Um, well, Can I don't know. Maybe. Down? Maybe yeah. not, but um, if you're talking about that, yes, I, I create rules for that. And and you could see like the final version of the app doesn't have those like announcement messages showing. Um, and I've done that by selecting those um, those attributes and just making it like display none. Um, actually, I'll show you exactly how I did it. Um, yeah. Uh, sorry, share screen. Awesome. So let's see. Roll. Yep. So you could see this is this is how I hid. Um, so it's height zero, uh, overflow hidden, margin zero. Um, so this will hide that content that I didn't want anyone to see. So if you see here, um, as I reroute, um, that message is not showing up. But if I turn on my screen reader, busy, busy. Busy. <laughs> Voice over on visited link. Pick link. Skip to main content. List one item. Instructions page loaded. You are currently on a link. To voice. So you could see that um though I'm not seeing it, it is still there and it is still accessible to screen readers. Okay, cool. Uh, let us know if that answered your question, Robert. Um then we have the next one from Neha. Do we have any data on disabled people prefer which browser? Um, there's a lot of data out there, and I think um, I think JAWS would be like the most popular uh, screen um, screen reader out there. Um, so that's <laughs> that's um, Internet Explorer. <laughs> yeah, okay. But a lot of people, I, I would say that a lot of people use Voiceover with Safari. But yes, I will I will send out um, the stats on that. Cool. Uh, uh, there's, let's go for the next question first. And then there's a clarification from Mitchell for the text being capitalized. I've used text term form uppercase before, but it seemed it also affects what the screen reader was saying in NVDA. Is there other, is there another alternative? Yeah, it does affect, um, oh, um, also there's this, um, there's this person who has um, CB Abbott has a really, really good talk on um, CSS properties and how they ac affect accessibility. Um, so let me um, find it and post it. I just had it like a, a moment ago um, and it's really, really good. You guys should totally check it out. Um, so what I'm sending you now, it's not the, the link to his talk itself, but he created this like application where you can kind of look around the CSS properties and he shows you like um, which ones. So I've just added it to the chat there if you guys want to take a look as I'm talking about it. But um, if you go to CSS test cases and you open one of them, um, it will kind of tell you um, what happens to, to each of these like uh, and what kind of support it gets depending on the screen reader and pairing with browser. And yeah, and unfortunately there uh, isn't really a lot of, um, you can do for um, transforming to uppercase, I guess. Um, it, it will kind of be a little bit weird. So I would say like, think about like, as you're designing your applications, think about like uh, what the need for having capitalized letters um, versus just kind of lowercase. Cool. Um, Mitchell, just remind us what he was asking. He has a clarification. He was asking, does tab index get reevaluated by when populated by reactive properties? And then he's clarifying now that what he meant is tab index equals, so like a, a two-way binding of a prop 
some other index prop on several v4 generated elements what effect does this have on a screen reader Hmm. So I would be wary of doing something like that. Like, um, again, because of like positive numbers, like we don't really want to do that. Like, in fact, if you run an audit, um, it's, it's going to catch it as a flag. Um, so it's just kind of like an anti-pattern. Like I would recommend just staying away from using anything positive and just staying with zero or tab index of negative one for like programmatic focus. Um, another thing I want to say to NATO who had the, uh, the question about, um, capitalized yeah um something you can do like if, if it absolutely matters to your design is to yes capitalize it and you could always uh wrap it in something and give it an aria label so that it reads it correctly um it is a little bit like double work but um especially if you're if you're bringing that um content in as a as like a data prop property and like you could just like reuse it both in the aria label and in your content um then you don't have to kind of write it twice and edit it twice every time you'll just be like in your data cool neha is saying recently i tried screen readers on mozilla firefox mac and voice over support was not there any thoughts how to handle such cases screen or someone um yeah i mean i would recommend pairing it with the with the most supported um, screen reader for that um, for that specific uh, browser for that specific screen reader. So if you are using VoiceOver, um, consider using Safari. And I know, for example, I really like using Chrome for like the dev tools that it has. But like every time I'm like, okay, let me like like full on screen reader and all of the tools, then I'll go to Safari and test it out there. So last question for now, at least, um, Roberto Cuba Roche Rocha. Ooh. What about CSS-based layout reordering using grid flat flexbox? Should that just be avoided? <laughs> Roberto, I love this question. <laughs> um, yeah, avoid it. <laughs> like, for, like what I mean by this is like, um, you know, like that newspaper style um, where you grab CSS grid and kind of shift all your website around. So like if you're on mobile, it looks like this and then you're going to grab that content and do this and like bigger, you might do something like this. So it changes the order it changes the order visually, but the DOM remains the same. So what that means, if you have an L, if you have uh, tabable elements here and you have tabable elements in this section and you do this, when you tap through your application, this is going to get tab first because it, that's number one in the DOM order. Um, so that's really bad because then as users are uh, navigating your applications, they're going to kind of jump from one place to another. Um, so we, you really want to keep that in mind when you're creating like unique layouts. <laughs> cool. So uh, I said I didn't have virtual pizza or drinks before, and I found them <laughs> in the meantime. So just because this is what we're used to doing, if you have a beverage, feel free to bring it up and cheers with us. Cheers. Cheers. Mm -hmm. um, yes, super. Thank you so much for the talk. If there are any questions in the meantime, feel free to comment them. Also, like we sometimes do in meetups and we put in the program today, if you do have a general Vue.js question for the group, free free to post it in the chat and we can take a few minutes to uh, cover that. If not, um, we've already gone almost an hour, so um, we will slowly round this thing off, but uh, feel free to have some virtual drinks and beverages and your own from your fridge and um, <laughs> take a cheers, cheers with us and join us in the chat. Um, yeah. yeah. There's several thank yous and Ivan says, I've never thought about reordering. Thanks a lot. No so problem. Cool. <laughs> I'm glad I could help. <laughs> yeah. Cool. How's your situation, Maria? Are you home office these days or? Yeah, I'm uh, completely um, quarantining. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. How about you? Yeah, not, it's not, not officially quarantining, but it's basically it. I'm home with the family. We're not allowed to be with anyone else uh, except our family, the ones we live with in Austria, and of course, going out to buy groceries and stuff. All shops are closed except for like the most um, basic ones, grocery stores and pharmacies and post office and stuff like this. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah they've closed down all restaurants and bars. I'm in North Carolina. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, here is also the restaurants and bars are closed. Uh, I think there's one question, at least a comment from Robert. As for the CSS framework based on accessibility, there's always so much effort looking for semantic naming. Accessibility perhaps seems to offer a lot already. Hmm. I guess that was more of a statement. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So then we let's just give it one or two more minutes and feel free to post, uh, send me a list of anything you want to share. Uh, you can also post it in a comment in the video, but if you send it to me, I'll post it in the description of the video. There will be a recording made available very shortly after this stream is uh, finished automatically by YouTube. So that's very nice. Please feel free to give us any, how are you, Jenny, from Russia? Nice to see you in the chat. Uh, feel free to uh, let us know any feedback. This is the first time that we're trying out the live stream and we're trying out a tool called StreamYard. You're seeing a logo uh, on top there by it because we're using a free version. We will consider using a paid version if we keep do using this. I've liked using it a lot from the organizer's perspective, and I'd like to get your feedback on how you liked uh, our interaction, uh, the stream itself, and how we can improve if we need to. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, so one last follow-up from Robert again. So now he's saying that's why I asked whether it would make sense to create a CSS framework around accessibility props. Ah, CSS framework around accessibility props. I see. Hmm. I'm sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah, maybe something to look into. Yeah. And if you get something going, uh, Robert, then uh, feel free to send Maria your repo, and I'm sure she'll yeah. give you some. Yeah. And um, check out the View Accessibility Project. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Contribute. <laughs> For sure. For sure. Cool. Then I think, let me see if I can figure this out. Good. I think we'll officially say goodbye. All right, um, thanks everyone for being here and listening. Um, I hope yeah. you guys uh, go uh, out and create all of the accessible applications. <laughs> sure, <laughs> and stay safe, stay home, Yeah. assuming you have to, and uh, hope to see you soon. And thanks for joining, Maria. It was very nice to have you enlighten us on accessibility. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you.